his white outfit stained red with his blood. His friend Frank was found standing over him, calling for help, and the toy trumpet that David had been wearing around his neck was splattered red. In the shadows of the cathedral was the killer, an Irishman named Lawrence Whelan, who would claim many excuses for this murder, including that the devil himself had pulled the trigger. So, let's talk a little bit about the, the backstory here. So, St. Andrew's Cathedral had started its life as a small chapel, but in October of 1890, just two months before this shooting occurred, work began on the impressive Gothic structure that stands there today. The building was still under construction, however, when this midnight mass was being held. Now, despite this new project that was going on, this building, however, was said to be haunted. In 1886, Bishop Segers was shot dead by an Irishman named Francis Fuller. Francis Fuller was said to have shown symptoms of insanity, and Bishop Zegers believed that he could help cure him of his insanity by means of spiritual healing. Now, after Fuller shot the bishop, he acted very calmly and would shake the hands of people around him claiming that the demon needed to be killed. He would later be convicted of manslaughter, and as a compromise between guilty of murder, he would later be convicted of manslaughter as a compromise between guilty of murder and not guilty due to insanity. In 1888, the body of Bishop Segers was brought to St. Andrew's Cathedral and was buried on site in the crypt. And ever since then, people have said that the ghost of the bishop has haunted the cathedral grounds. The ghost was so real to many people that... Lawrence Whelan first claimed that he shot David Fee out of self-defense, believing him to be the ghost of the bishop appearing to people that night. Some of the worshippers attending Midnight Mass carried David's body back to the party he had come from, where he died of the massive wound in his chest. Whelan had left from the scene, but less than two hours later, he would actually give himself up and turn himself in. A police officer who was on duty that night for Christmas was asleep at the city's police barracks when he was shaken awake by Whelan himself who told him in no uncertain terms, quote, I am the man that be a man that shot a man tonight, end quote. Whelan was arrested and the murder weapon, which was a shotgun, was recovered from a yard of an, of an abandoned house nearby. So Whelan would turn himself in, but what the police did not have was a motive for this Christmas murder. Now, as mentioned, Whelan's first story is that he believed David was the human form of this bishop reappearing that night, but he would go on to change his story. And when he did so, he said, and went on to admit that he had been carrying a gun, but believed a negative entity in the form of the bishop himself had attacked. 
actually seeing the bishop's ghostly form, you know, transforming into a human, and then changed the story that the bishop had actually attached to himself, and that caused him to kill. So, two very different stories that he gives police. But, ultimately, Waylon claimed that it was the devil itself who pulled the trigger. Now, this is probably not surprising, but at first, Waylon was considered insane, and an investigation would show that he was trying to cover up the truth. He was trying to cover up the truth, which to police was not so supernatural. Whelan was actually a watchman at St. Andrew's Cathedral and would display an Irish independence flag outside the building where he was stationed. And apparently, this display of the Irish independence flag caused a lot of tension between the construction workers working on the cathedral and the Irish-American workers. The Union Jack, the United States flag, and the Irish flag were allowed to fly over the site, but a worker named Thomas Deasy removed the Irish independence flag, which was seen as a political statement at the time. Whelan had believed that Thomas Deasy had deliberately removed it to offend him, and because of this, many arguments would ensue to a point that Whelan couldn't see beyond the belief that Thomas Deasy was against him, and Ireland, which did not sit well for Whelan. And because of all of this, many construction workers claimed that Whelan vowed to seek revenge against Deasy. On Christmas Eve night, it was reported that Whelan was downing whiskey like water and became so intoxicated that he turned violent. He knew that Thomas Deasy wore a white raincoat and so he kept an eye out for someone dressed as white coming into the cathedral for midnight mass. And so, in a haze of drunkenness, he saw David and Frank walking towards the building. And because he was not seeing things clearly due to his intoxication, he concluded that David, who again was dressed as a white clown, was in fact Daisy. Frank would later tell police that Waylon walked out of the shadows and shouted, quote, I challenge you, end quote. And then he would shoot David at point blank range and ran away. So, a Christmas Eve murder is, of course, shocking. And it was absolutely shocking to the people of Victoria, British Columbia. But the fact that David had been the victim of mistaken identity was even worse. It was an absolute assassination gone wrong and was seen as a form of political terrorism. Now, the time would come that Whelan had to face trial, and yet again, his story would change. He claimed that this had all been a big misunderstanding, and that he did not know the shotgun was loaded. He claimed that he had been standing outside of the cathedral when David and Frank got 
Christmas Day. 
day. Um, as a side note, completely unrelated to this story, but there is a show on Netflix called Midnight Mass, and if you like spooky kind of shows, um, I highly recommend you watch Midnight Mass. I watched it earlier this year, and it is hands down one of the best shows I've ever watched. Um, I can't remember how many episodes are in it. It's only one season, and I don't think they're coming back with another one, but oh my gosh, it is so, so freaking good. So I highly recommend you watch it. Let me know what you thought about this case. Um, and I do just want to close with this. I know that the holiday season, you know, is portrayed as a very joyful time and full, full of happiness and love, festivities and celebration. And all of that is wonderful and great. If you have the good fortune of having the opportunity to participate in such things, but I also want to say that I know that the holiday season can also be an equally challenging and hard time for people. Whether you have lost someone you love, if, if you don't have a close relationship with your family, or if being around your 